Jesus is King of Kings. If you can hear me, if you can see me, let me know in the comments, put your city. If you can hear me, if you can see me, let me know in the comments, put your city. If you don't mind, y'all, tap the screen. That'll help notify other people that we are live. Oh, let me change this. <sighs> Happy Wednesday, y'all. It is the middle of the week, hump day. California is in the building. Shout out to you. Hey, Missy. I've been calling you Mizzy. I think it was the way it, it was... Um, spelled so i apologize i've been calling you mizzy this whole time it's missy my bad and unless you receive the name that i give you <laughs> i'm just kidding tennessee is in the building shout out to you thank you so much for joining arizona is in the building shout out to you hey black diamond shout out to you thank you so much for joining miami florida is in the building shout out to you thank you so much for joining ohio is in the building thank you guys for tapping the screen appreciate it Mississippi is in the building. I accept it. <laughs> it's too funny. Thank y'all so much for joining. We are on day 17. We're getting ready to wrap up this challenge. We got a few more days left. We are on ATL is in the building. Shout out to you. We are on day 17 of this challenge. We're getting ready to wrap it up. Today is an important day because the theme for today is the role of forgiveness. Can somebody scribe that in the comments for me? The role of forgiveness. This is something um, important. This is something that we all need to leave this new year or leave the exit this year into the new year with the role of forgiveness, with the role of forgiveness, having forgiveness in our heart. And something that I was doing this morning, I started to think about different things that uh, may have offended me this year, um, different things that may have hurt my feelings. And I just kept saying, God, I forgive. I thought about whatever the situation was, whatever the person did or, or didn't do. I just kept saying, God, I forgive. God, I forgive. God, I forgive. God, I forgive. And I just kept saying, God, I do not want to leave 2023 uh, with unforgiveness in my heart. Unforgiveness, y'all, is a blessing blocker. It, oh, it's an entrance to the enemy. When you don't forgive, it's an in, and you give an open entrance to the enemy in your life. So the enemy can wreak havoc in your life because you made a decision that I'm not going to forgive. I'll give you an example. I'll talk about me. Last year, I was in a fence with a, with a client of mine. It was a couple. I, I was doing marketing for them. And then they just decided, we had an agreement, right? They just decided I'm not going to pay her anymore. So I was mad and I was offended. And I didn't realize I was offended until I noticed that my money begins to slow up. My money began to dry up. And I said, um, God, like, what's up? Like, something's off here because money is a current, right? It flows. It doesn't stop, right? So I'm like, Lord, something is off here. And he said, you're offended. And when you're offended, that stops my hand. So immediately, I repented for being offended, even though they were wrong. <laughs> I repent. My conscience had to be cleared, right? My, and my integrity is more important than them. I repented for being offended. And I even reached out to them. And I said, I repent for being offended. And they never even responded. They probably didn't even really know what I was talking about. But I wanted to make sure I was good in the sight of God. The key to ascension or the way to ascend is by clean hands and a pure heart clean hands and a pure heart. So we got to get to a place in our spiritual walk where we forgive. It does not say that person was right. It does not say, you know, that what we don't condone what they did, but we don't stay bond bondage to it. We don't stay bound to what somebody did or didn't do. Right. We let them go. We let them go. We release them. And sometimes it's, you got to forgive by faith. Right. So maybe tomorrow, I, that I, something may trigger me to think about the people that I was releasing today. So what I got to do again is keep releasing them and by faith and believe in God that those people are going to be out of my mind, that God is going to take care of me well beyond what 
hurt my feelings or what somebody didn't do or the disappointment, whatever it is. So we want to make sure that we operate from a place of forgiveness. If you've been raped, you've been molested, you've been hurt as a child and you're still holding on to that stuff. You got to forgive. You got to forgive for your grown up self, for your adult self to be free. Because when you don't forgive and you harbor onto that, it affects your decisions as an adult. You don't want to be a 55-year-old man still mad at grandpa who's dead and gone and you're just to and fro in life trying to figure this thing out because you're still mad at him, right? Let grandpa go and believe that God has dealt with grandpa. With grandpa. How is today different than day four? What was day four? Hold up. Now I got to go look back and see what they're talking about. Day four was the gospel of peace. Day four was the gospel of peace. Peace and forgiveness are two different things. You do get a level of peace once you forgive them. You do get a level of peace once you forgive. You do get a level of peace once you forgive. Um, but yeah, y'all offense if there's any think about that take some time today and write if you're offended at anybody think about the last 11 months you're offended at anybody you need to forgive anybody write them down and then i want you to surrender them to your father i want you to surrender them to your father and sometimes you got to keep going back because maybe the trauma is just that deep sometimes you got to keep going back sometimes you got to keep going back so the scripture for today was matthew 6 14 through 15 somebody scribe that for me Matthew 6, Matthew 6, 14 through 15, it says, if you, well, let me read King James. If you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So we want God to forgive us for the things that we do or the things that we've done. We got to forgive other people. We got to forgive other people. My God forgiving me is more important than anything else. So God, take it. Take it from me. I was molested. I was raped. I was beat. My husband cheated. My wife cheated. My kids betrayed me. Whatever it is, God, I give it to you. I'm no longer a slave. I'm no longer going to be in bondage to what happened. And even we got to fix our expectations, right? Because you'll become disappointed. When you expect you from other people, and this is something that I have to preach to myself all the time, everybody's not going to operate the way I operate. Everybody's not going to have the same integrity that I have, right? I, gotta, I can't expect me from other people. And another thing that I've been asking God is, God, give me the grace to deal with this person. Give me the grace to deal with this relationship. Because it, even in your adult relationships with different people, you go do different things, you learn people, but sometimes you need a grace to deal with it. A grace to, to navigate when you know like their ways are a little funny and sometimes they, you know, they do a little too much or they say the wrong things. You need a level of grace to deal with them, right? So I ask God, give me a grace. Give me the grace. Certain, like, certain, especially when you know their covenant relationships, especially when you know God put you in that relationship with that person for you to be a blessing to iron sharpen iron. Sometimes even with some of your bestest friends, you got to have a grace for them. My sisters, I love them dearly. I got to have a grace for them. I know how each of them are differently. Right. And then sometimes the little one, sometimes she'd be saying a little bit too much. Got to have a grace for her. Uh -huh. And if you watching, I love you, boo. And the task for today is forgive someone who has wronged you. Forgive someone who has wronged you is our task for today. The reflection is to reflect on the freedom that comes with forgiveness. Reflect on the freedom that comes with forgiveness. Forgiveness is always for you. It's not really about the other person. It's so that you're not in bondage. You're not enslaved to what somebody did or didn't do or the situation. Some of you got to forgive God going into this new year. You cannot take another day to be mad at God. You got to repent for that, too. You got to remember God's ways is not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. He sees beyond where you see you crying about a heartbreak. God knew that Johnny was going to be a crackhead in five years. You crying about Maria. He knew Maria's heart was going to turn away from from him 
So it was going to affect your relationship with her. So he's like, I'm going to allow the breakup so that I can get you to where I need you to be because I have somebody else for you. I have somebody who actually has my heart. I actually have somebody that has integrity. And it's interesting that this scripture talks about forgiveness and then it talks about fasting. It says, moreover, when you fast, do not be like hypocrites with a sad countenance for they disfigure their countenance that they may appear to men to be fasting. That's basically telling us, don't go around telling everybody that you're fasting. You ain't got to be everywhere. Oh, I'm fasting to make it seem like this is this religious thing you do and you're so good because you're fasting. But I think it's interesting that it talks about forgiveness and then it gets into fasting. I think there's a prophetic parallel between the two. I think there's a prophetic parallel between the two. When you're fasting, you need to be forgiven. You need to be forgiven because fasting is a posture of the heart. It's a posture of the heart. It's not just we're not eating food, right? It's not just we're, we're, um, we're praying with it, but we also have to have a heart posture to heaven, right? God reveals things. God speaks, but our heart has to be postured, right? You're live making team things. Not Hold on, y'all. I don't know if somebody flagged me or reported me. But it's saying that this live is not for people under certain age. I don't know. Sometimes people, just because they don't like me, they'll go and flag it. Um, but whatever. I'm not going to stay on here too long anyway because my battery's dying. So today is the, the role of forgiveness, y'all. Make sure you read Matthew 6, 14 through 15. Forgive someone who has wronged you. It may be multiple people. And then reflect on the freedom that comes with forgiveness. Some of you have to forgive by faith. Some of you are going to have to forgive by faith. And if you find yourself in a place where you are upset and you're mad at God, you find yourself where you are upset and mad with God, then you got to uh, repent for that and, and tell him exactly why you're mad. You had, an, you had an expectation. You put God into how you wanted him to deliver a thing. So we need to repent for that. Today is fasting 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. is um, is our fasting. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Remember, if you're somebody who couldn't handle that one time, just um, condense it to uh, maybe 7 to 12 or 6 to 3, something, something. Um, this is also the last fasting day of this 21-day um, challenge. This is the last day of the 20, the, fa the last fasting day. So we've got... Few more days, Christmas Eve, we will be done. Christmas Eve, we'll be done with this challenge. Make sure, hey, Lisa, Lisa, make sure we um, continue to pray to 30 minutes. I want you to continue to pray about the discerning of spirits, pray about wisdom. I want you to pray for the region, whatever region, whatever region, whatever region you're in, Georgia, Alabama, California, Tennessee, Texas, wherever. I want you to begin to pray about the region. If you are in America, I want you to begin to intercede for America, intercede for your country. Even if you're not in America, we can use prayers from everybody. Yeah. We can use prayers from everybody. Um, and just begin to ask God what your role is going to be in 2024. If you are outside of the will of God, the time to come in is now. The time to come in is now. 2024 is going to be a very unique year. I heard a prophet the other day said, America as we knew it is done. It's coming a new day in America, a day we've never seen before. But we will know that God is with us. We will know that God is with us. So make sure we do that. Also, I think... After this challenge is over, I'm going to take some time off of social media. So I probably won't be posting for a little while, but I'll be back um, during the new year. I just want to make sure I get my mind right. Also want to make sure that this is not an addiction, right? Me coming on TikTok is not an addiction. I don't want to make sure, make sure that I'm not caught up in scrolling or anything like that. I want to make sure that I'm tapped into heaven and I don't miss a thing because it's going to be next year is going to be the best and the worst of times. So we want to make sure we are in direct alignment so we can hear from heaven when he says, go left, go right, do whatever. So I think I'm going to take some time off after this challenge is over. Uh, but I would definitely keep in touch through email to remind you about the 
prayer board, um, the prayer board, uh, not challenge, the prayer board party, which is January the 6th. We hit capacity. So I took the link down. I took the link down because we did hit capacity. We did hit capacity. So I took the link down. Um, but I'll send a reminder out. I'll send a reminder out. Also, my workshop is January the 20th. We hit capacity on that. I know a lot of people are still asking about it. I didn't take the link down yet. So if you sneak in, you just sneak in. But we did hit capacity with that. So to everybody that signed up, super excited about that. That's going to um, take us to another level in business in 2024. In 2024. Thank you, beauty. I appreciate that. Exactly for prayer vision. Yeah, and that, and I think that's why I, th this challenge has been a sacrifice. So we thank God that we were able to do it. If you came in and you've been here for 17 days straight, you need to applaud yourself because it's hard to do things like this when there's a million and one distractions. There's a million and one distractions. You have a holiday for those that celebrate the holiday. You have a holiday coming up. You got family coming in. You, all of this stuff going on. You got to go shopping, but you're still making time for the, your heavenly father. Everybody can't say that. There's some. There was a lot of people that's like, wait till January, wait till January to do the challenge because they knew they couldn't hang in it. But you sacrifice at least 30 minutes of your day to spend with your Heavenly Father. Thank you for the gifts, y'all. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, y'all. I'm not going to stay on too long. I'm going to try to put this on YouTube as well. It's been taking longer to download it. I don't know since that flag came across what that's going to mean. Um, I don't know if somebody's reporting me or, or what. I've never really saw that particular message. So I don't know, but this is day 17, the role of forgiveness, Matthew 6, 14 through 15 was our scripture today. Forgive somebody, forgive somebody or some people, forgive somebody or some people, forgive somebody or some people, and then reflect on the freedom that comes with forgiveness, reflect on the freedom that comes with forgiveness, and then make sure you're praying at least 30 minutes today. If you can't do it all at one time, break it up. I wasn't consistent as I wanted, so I restarted the challenge book up. That's okay. That's okay. The fact that you even restarted that, we thank God for that. Because some people would have been like, ah, forget it. Forget it. Because some people that joined in later on in the challenge, I've been telling them, start from day one. Because you miss, you miss the repentance. You miss the beginning of it. Um, so we like to do things in totality if we can. Yeah, God help us all. God have mercy. God of mercy. He's a merciful God. He's faithful. He's faithful. And spend, if you find yourself in a, in a place of worrying, spend more time in worship because worship and worry cannot exist at the same time. Worship and worry cannot exist at the same time. Cannot exist at the same time. So you want to make sure you spend some time with that. In the morning, I get up and I just worship. Sometimes it's for hours because I want to make sure I get off anything that's on me. I want to make sure I get it off. Right. I want to make sure I exalt God above everything. It'll keep you humble and keep your heart postured. Right. When you keep exalting God above everything. God, I know my bills are due, but I exalt you. God, I know such and such is in the hospital, but I exalt you above that. God, I know the job has not come yet, but I exalt you above that. Worship and worry cannot exist at the same time. Put God above everything. Got to make him Lord over everything i was i saw a little clip of i think it was miles monroe the other day and he said i don't i don't be praying about stuff i just say god you are lord over this and you are lord over that now i'm not saying don't go pray because i'm an avid for prayer but he just was talking about making god lord over every area of your life so that he is the guiding force over that particular area god i make you lord over my finances god i make you lord over my career I told y'all this story. I was broke, busted, disgusted, sleeping on my parents' couch, struggling three degrees. Nobody was hiring me. And I was trying to figure things out. And I gave God every area of my life except my career. And that area is where I struggled at. But it wasn't until I said, God, yes to your will, yes to your way. You can have my career, whatever you want for my career. Because all I wanted to do was work for BET. That was my goal. I was going to go to D.C. or New York, wherever they were at the time. And I was going to be marketing for BET. That's all I wanted. And God said, no, I have something better for you. I have something more grander for you. I'm going to give you your own network. That's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother story. Yeah, worship, worship, worship. Shifts 
it changes the atmosphere, right? It changes, sorry, you don't like the temperature? Then change the atmosphere, change the thermostat. And you can do that in worship. And worship is not dependent on a sound either. Because sometimes the Lord will make you turn this off just to hear you. Just to hear you. Just to hear your voice. There are times, now I don't really sing good in the natural at all. But there are times where I have been tapped into the spirit. And it sounds like something else is coming out of this voice. I've been so high times in the spirit that there's something that comes out of here. It ain't my voice. It's something. But that's the going to another level in worship, right? Yeah, I make you Lord over every area of my life. Make you Lord over my finances. Make you Lord over my purpose. I make you Lord over my marriage. I make you Lord over being me being a parent. Whatever it is, try that for 30 days. Do that for 30 days. Whatever area you're struggling in, I want you to do that for 30 days. I say, Lord, I make I surrender, whatever it is. I make you Lord over my finances. I make you Lord over this household for 30 days. And then I want you to come back and tell me the testimony. I want you to come back and tell me the testimony. I've been struggling with prayer these days today. as, And that's a tactic of the enemy, right? The enemy will keep us distracted. The enemy will make us feel like we have nothing to pray, um, to get us not to pray. When you think about the occult, they fast and they pray and they're very consistent. They will go for hours and hours and hours and hours. They're very consistent. It takes spiritual discipline. It takes spiritual discipline. Are you doing a challenge in January? Yeah, um, probably towards the ending though of January. I think we're gonna do more. We need to get some more word in us. So we're probably gonna do more of a Bible reading challenge this time around. I'm gonna try it out and see how it goes. We'll still incorporate prayer and things like that in it, but I think we're going to do towards the ending of, of January only because I um, I think I have a tr travel sometime in January, so I want to be make sure that I'm... When I'm traveling, it throws me off, like with doing, showing up and doing these videos. I'll be forgetting what day I'm on, so I like to try to be home. So probably towards the ender, the ending, not ender. What does surrendering look like? Sitting back and waiting, praying and surrendering. So everybody's surrender is going to be different. Right. My surrender was I hit rock bottom and I had nothing else to do. So I said, God. No money's coming in. I'm struggling. I'm working five jobs. You didn't call me to toil. I give this thing to you. I give this thing to you. I'm tired of being my own God in my finances, my purpose. I got three degrees and nobody's hiring me. And I didn't apply and applied and applied and applied. I still don't have that dream job. God, what is the plan that you have for my life? Because I have this dream job of working for BET. But God, what do you see? Why, why isn't BET for me? You know, so everybody's surrender is going to look different. But it's, it's going before God. And giving him that very thing, that very struggle, that very thorn, that very thing that's not happening in your life is giving it to him and see what he has to say about it. God, I'm turning this over. I can no longer, God, handle this. I'm giving you back this vision. And this is something, too, I was talking about with one of my uh, pastor friends the other day. He said that God wants a renewed yes, but this time this yes no strings attached. This yes doesn't give you a blessing on the other side. God wants to see, will you say yes to me if there's no blessing attached to it? It's this posture of the heart surrendering, really. And when you find yourself about to go back and take it, take it back because you feel like God's not hearing you or you feel like he's not answering in your timing, you got to continue to surrender it. You got to continue to surrender. And that's why relationship with Holy Spirit, that's why prayer life is very, very important. And spending time with him daily. So you understand and know what he's doing. And also when you go into prayer, we talked about this during the intimacy with God challenge. Listening. Listening. Sometimes you go into prayer and you don't say anything. Sometimes you go to prayer and you don't say anything. It's God, what are you speaking to me? What are you speaking to me? And I think I have videos on, on my page about um, how to make Holy Spirit your, your best friend and here, learning the voice of God. God always speaks through this word. If you can't find him anywhere else, you'll find him here in the word. 
And what I like to do is if I'm struggling with a particular area in my life, I go and look up somebody in here that was struggling with that and I begin to read that. And I watch as God speaks to me in regards to that. God is speaking to us right now, telling us that some of us need to forgive. Some of us need, thought we forgave, right? And we're still lingering and holding on to it. So we may need to go back, right? Don't take, don't take these, these themes and these scriptures lightly because the Lord is he's speaking to us through, through his word. You know, you may be thinking you forgave mama, but yet something triggers you and you get mad all over again. You relive that in your head. The enemy sends thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. And they become a movie trailer. That thought, you meditated on it for a little while, it becomes a movie trailer. Before you know it, you're mad again, you're angry again, you're hating mama again, you're reliving it up. Your body is feeling the emotions of all of that. You got to surrender. And some of you, you got to forgive by faith. God, I hate Bobby Jean. And I hate Bobby Jean with a passion. I need you to help me to forgive Bobby Jean for what he did, or is Bobby Jean a woman, or for what she did, whatever. Be honest with God. That's why you. That's why he's not just this off creator, this off deity. He's your father. You got to learn him as Abba. When you learn him as Abba, it changes your perspective. It changes your perspective. When you see that there's a father that loves you and wants the best for you, he knows the plans he has for you, that changes your mind that changes your heart's posture. It renews the mind because you're like, man, there's somebody out here that really has my back for real, for real. My mother in the natural may fail me. My daddy may fail me. My husband may fail me. My wife may fail me. My children may fail me. But I got a God who's riding with me to the end. My trust and my hope, I'm riding with God to the end. We got to make a decision, y'all. If you are not saved, you want to Come back home. 2024 will be the year. You see a lot of back, backsliders come home. I'm telling you, 2024, even I don't even think the rest of this year, we cannot make it without God. We cannot, we cannot afford to be outside of the will of God. We cannot afford. Yes, he's the father to the fatherless. When I was going through daddy issues, one day I said, God, show me how to be a daughter so that I can receive you as father. And he began to show me. And that instantly took off daddy issues. And I don't care if, 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 uh, uh, if I never have interactions with a father in the natural, if I never have interactions with a spiritual father in the natural, my heavenly father, he has me, he has me, he has me. He leads me, he guides me. He showed, he showed me what, what, what the role of a daughter looks like. He showed me what the role of a daughter looks like and I received him as father. The Bible says, when my mother and my father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. And he's taken me up. He's taken me up and showed me what real unconditional love is. He showed me that he has plans for me. He showed me protection. He showed me guidance. Some of you too, you gotta forgive your parents for what they did and didn't do. They're learning along the way. I remember the first sermon I ever preached. I gotta get off here, my throat is so scratchy. I ever preached, I, I got into, um, forgiveness and I started talking about forgiving your parents for what they did and didn't do. A lot of them were young. A lot of them were babies. They didn't know what they were doing at the time. They made some mistakes. You know, there's no guide to telling you how to be the perfect parent. You got to literally parent with the Holy Ghost. And some of the, our parents didn't have the Holy Ghost at that time. You know what I'm saying? So we got to give them a level of grace. They may treat the grandkids better than they ever treated us, right? But that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. You learn from that and you know how to be a better parent and to give yourself grace as a parent because you won't always do the same things. This is the right things. We need the Holy Ghost to parent. We need the Holy Ghost in everything. We need the Holy Ghost to go to Walmart, Target, the dollar store. I was in the dollar store the other day and two women were getting ready to fight. And I'm like, this is why I don't like coming out during the holiday times because I know people get a little... A little anxious, a little anxiety. Now, mind you, Christmas comes the same time every year. We know every year on January, I mean, December 25th, that Christmas is going to be here. You have 11 months to buy what you need to buy. <laughs> but yet, they were in the store getting ready to fight. And it's just like, yeah, you need the, you need, you need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. And so, God, we thank you for we thank you for protection. We thank you for 
protecting us from danger seen and unseen. There are a lot of things that go on that you don't see in the natural. But your angels look out for you. Your angels look out for you. Your heavenly father looks out for you. The angels move. Oh, my child, something, car, move that car out the way. Let me shift that car out the way. They ain't paying attention, but my child is here. Let me shift this car out the way. All right, y'all. I love y'all with the love of the Lord. I think I've covered everything. Let's finish this challenge strong. Um, if, it, if I don't talk to you by Christmas, I hope you have a Merry Christmas to those that celebrate. And a Happy New Year. And a Happy New Year. We will reconvene at our uh, prayer board party. Um, we are over capacity, so maybe we're going to do first come, first serve. I'll probably try to see about getting a little bit more um, the Zoom meeting uh a larger meeting, but I'm not going to scale it out to thousands and thousands because I know thousands and thousands are not going to come. I've been doing this long enough to know people just sign up sometimes just to sign up. But those that can come, you will come. And I'll send an email to remind you. Um, it's January the 6th. I think that's a Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern. I took the link down already because we were at capacity. We're at capacity. I may stream a little bit on TikTok. We'll see. I may stream a little bit on TikTok. Um, all, and I'll send you out a list, too, if you need some some ideas of what things that you can buy um, out the store. But I was, when I was in the dollar store the other day, I saw that they had a bunch of, um, uh, like, scrapbook stuff and um, those sticker letters and things like that. So you can go in places like that. You can go in Hobby Lobby and get, like, a cork board, poster board. I think this year I'm going to try to find a, a, a picture frame. Try to find a real big picture frame I'm going to try this year. And that will be what I do my prayer board on. So that way I can hang it up somewhere in my office. I usually go live. Well, during this challenge, I've been live Mondays and Wednesdays at 9 a.m. But I think today is going to be my last live for a little while. I want to pause and take in. This year has been a year for me, y'all. I know I get on here and I encourage y'all. But this year has been a year. The enemy literally tried to suck life out of me. But I did. I can say thank you, Jesus, that I battled well. So I want to take some time off and just regroup, get my goals in order, continue to strategize with the Holy Spirit for what's going to come in the next, at least plan out the next couple of months, you know. How can I join your challenge? Um, I have to put it back. I took it off. I had it in the bio and I'm like, we're on day 17. Nobody joined it. So um, after I get off live, I'll put it, put the, um, put the worksheet back up. Just give me a little time. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. So sometimes you just got to pull away. You know what I'm saying? When you give of yourself, a lot of times you got to be able to pull away. I was listening to this, uh, this woman the other day who has her own business. And she was just saying like, this year, she made herself so available to people as a been. This is good information for business owners. She made herself so available to people that she for lost herself in the process of it. She lost herself in the process of it. And she's like, I can't afford to do that anymore. She was just like, yeah, I got chargebacks. I got people, you know, stealing my content. I had all this stuff going on. And I just kept being available and giving to people. And um, she was just like, I can't. I can't afford to do that. So I need to take some time off and regroup. And I was just like, that's a smart idea. I'm going to take my, my things for pulling back are a little bit different, though. I would just want to make sure that this is not an idol in my heart. This is not an addiction. You know what I mean? I, I want to make sure because Facebook and Instagram, you don't ever catch me on there. But there's been times I'm, I'm on here and I'm just looking. You know what I'm saying? So I want to just make sure I'm good. I want to make sure I'm good. I want to make sure that I'm not. You know, I just, just, just want to check my heart. So I go into the new year, right? I go into the new year, right? Yeah, but he didn't prosper. And you know why the enemy is cutting up so much? Because he know his time is coming. He know his time is coming. Thank you for that. He knows his time is short. So I got to help. I got to do. I got to wreak it as much as possible. That's why I keep saying to y'all. The enemy doesn't take sick days, so we can't afford to take sick days. Even if you do a 60-second prayer as you're getting dressed, you want to make sure you are tapping into heaven. Even if you just say, God, thank you for traveling mercies. Or God, I ask you for traveling mercies as I go out today. Keeping that constant communication with heaven. Checking in with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here today. 
I, I invite you, sit with me. You're welcome, Charlotte. You're welcome. Thank you for riding it out. You've been on quite a few challenges, and uh, I'm grateful for that. Thank you for, for rocking it out. And you are a woman of integrity, and we thank God for that. We thank God for that. And that's something to pray for, too, y'all. If you know that you don't have integrity or you know that, you know, you buy stuff out the store and then you lie and say you never got it, but you claim you love God, that's not integrity. So you want to check yourself. That's why fasting is also self-reflection as well. And that's why with me, I said, you know, if I find myself doing this, then I know that it's need time to pull back. It's time to pull back. Thank you guys for all the likes the shares, the comments, um, the subscriptions, the roses, and all the things that you guys have been giving me these last uh, few months or so since I've been going live. Y'all really, really been rocking it out with me. I started taking TikTok serious last year, around November, and I see the tremendous growth. I see the tremendous growth that only God can do. So I'm grateful for God. I don't ever take it lightly. When God gives you a little bit of influence, you should never take it lightly because some people pray about influence. Some people beg God about influence. Some people sell their soul for influence. And God says, no, let me find the one that wants my heart. The one that has no motives. The one that's going to help my people. You too. You too. I feel tired today too. I was like, you know, I might just like do, take a day where I do nothing. It's so hard to do. Um because you have so much other stuff going on, but I might take a day to just do nothing. I might take a day to just do nothing, you know, just rest my mind. <sighs> I love y'all, man, y'all, y'all, I really do. I really do, I really do. I feel like y'all are my family. Those that come on here and mod for me, you don't even have to do that, I appreciate that. Good morning, Katie. Those that come on here, even the silent watchers, you like, you know, I ain't commenting because I do that too sometimes. I go and just to listen and don't comment. Um, I do that a lot of times. So shout out to all the um, silent watchers. Appreciate you. Shout out to all my tappers. Appreciate you. Thank you so much, y'all, for every gift. Every, um, some people even sewed into me this year. That was, it was amazing. Thank you. I don't, I don't get on here for that and I don't ask for it. But when people reach out to you and like, hey, I just want to sew a seed into you. I thank God for that because you don't have to. You don't have to. Your reach is far. We praise God. We praise God. We praise God. <sighs> I feel like when you said all you know, it's time to go. Does anybody need me to repeat this scripture? We only had one scripture today. If nothing else, y'all, I want y'all to work on forgiveness and offense. Think about those things today, today, today. A forgiveness and offense. I'm telling you, offense will stop the hand of God. I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it in my own life. That's why if I ever notice that money or something is drying up, I immediately stop and say, God, if I did anything wrong, I repent. I repent. Even when I was going through a hard time there this year, I made sure. I was like, God, hold up. Did I do something? Did I fend something? Fenced heaven in some capacity? And then the Lord took me to Job. And it wasn't because of anything I, I did. And it wasn't because anything Job did. Job was found upright and righteous in sight of God. But God allowed him to be tested. God allowed him to be tested. But Job 42, the chapter 42, came along, came along eventually. God, Job, that was a, he's, he's an amazing, uh, or he was an amazing example in the Bible. This man literally lost everything in a matter of days, it seemed like. He lost his family his children, he lost everything that he had. His body was, I don't know if that would, would be considered cancer or um, tumors in today's world, but he still had a posture towards God. Everybody else is like, curse God and die. His friends is like, you must have did something to God. <laughs> you must have did something to God. And then at the end, he had to go to God and pray for his friends. And once he did that, he received double for his trouble sometimes the lord will have us praying for people and that releases us to go into our next i remember when i was going through a season of betrayal one of the things that i had to do was go 
and pray for that person for 21 days straight. 21 days straight. I have to get off social media. I'm hurting, you know? You love people, because betrayal doesn't come from strangers. Betrayal comes from people that have access to your heart. You love people and you don't expect them to do you wrong or to turn against you or whatever. I was already in a hard season. My brother was murdered. He was stabbed 21 times by his best friend. Thank you for the roses. Is that my smiley? Thank you. My brother was murdered and stabbed 21 times by his best friend. So I was going through that. And then I find myself going through betrayal. And um, at the time I had a big platform. So, you know, when people do things, they, they want to do it, do it. Um, I think that was also a test too, of if I will respond back to them on that level, um, it could have cost me my platform. So while they're saying all this stuff and lying, the Lord is like, you can't say anything back. You can't say anything back. And that was hurt. I'm like, wait a minute, God, they out here lying on me and I can't say nothing back. You know, I was a little, you know, I was a little feisty, you know, I was a little feisty then. And, and he said, no, he's teaching me. He said, I'm teaching you character. He said, I, you can't fight a devil. You can't fight a demon with boxing gloves. Boxing gloves carry no weight in the spirit. He said, what you need is the sword. What you need is the word of God. Because the word of God is going to change you. The word of God is going to renew your mind. The word of God is going to work on your heart. So when I got that revelation, that changed a lot for me. But then I had to go and, and pray for this person for 21 days. I was on a prayer assignment. The first seven days, I'm not going to lie. I was just like, God, keep them. God bless them. God. But then I was watching somebody on YouTube. This is back in 2019. I was watching somebody on YouTube. And they said they were on a 21-day prayer for somebody that the Lord told them to pray on. So I knew it was a divine thing of me hearing. And he said the first three days, he wasn't really praying like he should. And then the Lord said, I need you to pray for them like your life depend on it. I need you to pray for them as, is it, as if it's you and you want somebody to pray for you. And the spirit of prayer rose up in me in that day. And I began to start praying for generations and praying for different opportunities. And it's funny because I see them walk into some of the stuff that I've prayed for for them. Um, so the Lord will allow things like that to happen to you, to show you character, to teach you character. It takes spiritual maturity when you see somebody on social media lying and saying all this stuff and you know it's not true and you got receipts <laughs> and you got receipts and you can't say anything. My love for God would always overshadow anything anybody can say on me on the internet. And that's, and then during that time too, that helped me to develop thick skin because I had a platform, that platform had, I think maybe 2 million at the time. So people were always saying stuff about me, right? Didn't know me, but they were always saying stuff about me. Oh, your earrings, your nails, I was a Jezebel, I was this and that. But it made me have thick skin. That somebody I will never meet, a computer thug, who got so much to say behind a, now I guess a phone, I will never meet in real life, can never affect me, right? It means something if it was coming from somebody close to me or my inner circle. But when it's just a random person online, I will never meet. And we know that when you, if you ever see these people in real life, they don't have the same energy. Because the person that betrayed me, the Lord allowed our destinies to collide. And he told me back in 2019, I saw in a dream that we would come together one day at a conference and we would hug. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing that to my remembrance. And that happened a couple months ago. A couple months ago. They had all that talk, you know, in 2019, saying all that stuff. But when we saw each other... It was just like, hey, good to see you. You look good. Hugged and walked away and walked away and walked away and walked away. Yeah, betrayal hurts. I remember watching, I think it was the Kevin Hart documentary or something on Netflix. And he was betrayed by one of his, I don't remember the entire story, but he was betrayed by somebody that was close to him. Somebody he came up with, I think, for millions and millions of dollars. I mean, set him up, had uh, cameras in the hotel and Set him up, set him up, set him up. And um, I don't know, there was a lesson there when I was watching that that documentary. And I knew then, I mean, even if Kevin was wrong, but you don't expect it to come from somebody that close. Somebody that has access to you, somebody that hangs out with you, somebody that you feed, somebody that's 
you you giving money to, right? If I, because I'm one of those friends, if I got, you got, right? You giving, and then that person betrays you. You think about David and Ahithophel. Ahithophel was David's wise counsel at one time. And they said when Ahithophel spoke, it was almost as God himself was speaking. And so one day, Ahithophel teams up with Absalom and they make a plan to kill David. Somebody, and David in the song, oh God, I don't remember the song. But he basically said, I'm going to paraphrase this into the Quantum Renee version. The person I went to church with, the, church, the person I worshiped with, the person I ate with is now getting ready to betray me. He's bit in my hand. Maybe we got to do a study on betrayal. He's bit in my hand. He's bit in my hand. When your wise counsel, somebody that you call your best friend and your son team up to stop you, that's hurtful. That's hurtful. But Judas will always hang himself. That's what you got to always remember. Haman, which is another spirit, and Judas, they will always hang themselves. Ahithophel was pre-Judas. That Judas spirit has always been out here. And this is, this is Ahithophel. The Bible says, David prayed and said, and I'm going off of memory, y'all. It's been a while since I studied this. David prayed and asked God, can you turn Ahithophel's wise counsel into foolishness? Because Ahithophel was giving them wise counsel of how we can get David. David prayed, God, turn that wise counsel that he's given him into foolishness. God made good on that. God answered that, right? And then when they found out, and they, um, the Bible says that Ahithophel got his affairs in order and hung himself. He got his affairs in order and hung himself after David prayed that prayer because nobody was listening to his wise counsel. It was turned into foolishness. Judas will always hang himself, y'all. That's why you don't have to worry about getting back, getting back, getting back on people, getting back to people, because they will always hang themselves. They will always hang themselves. They will all they always hang themselves. Yeah, Ahithophel. His I forgot his. I think his name means. It's coming back to me a little bit. Brother of ruin. You gotta be careful what you name, name your children, what you name a situation, what you name a place that you're in. Brother of ruin. It was only a matter of time before he'd be ruined. <laughs> He's a brother of ruin. It's only a matter of time before that made good. You be careful. When you're in certain seasons, be careful what you name that season. Be careful what you name that season. Right? Be careful what you speak in that season. There's so many people that email me, and I'm always cringe when they talk about, I don't have enough money, I'm broke. I, bro I ugh, cringe because that's a curse word to me. I don't care if I had 10 cent in my account. I wouldn't say it. I wouldn't say I'm broke. You make a covenant with these words every time you say them. You got to be mindful, y'all. Got to be mindful. But we were talking betrayal. We were talking betrayal. We were talking betrayal. It never comes from strangers. It always comes from somebody who has access to your heart. To your heart. To your heart. So be mindful of that. Betrayal, though, it brings lessons. It brings lessons. It taught me my dependency on God, to trust God, to rely and depend on God more than anything, more than anything. Also, be mindful of how much you reveal and give to a person, right? Be mindful of how much you, t you tell. And that give, leads me to the next thing I want to say. Some of you need to operate going into 2024. You need to become stealth aircrafts, undetectable. Meaning you're not telling everybody your plans. Because even people closest to you, not going to get it. Not going to understand it. Not going to want you to have it. Some people want you to do good, but not better than them. Right? Some people want you to do good, but they don't want you to do better than them. And everybody has this false perception on what's better and what's good. Or I shouldn't say a false perception, but a different perception on it. I want y'all to move like stealth aircrafts. And if you don't know what that is, go Google it. Undetectable. Don't tell everything that you're doing. Holy Spirit already gave me ideas for 2024. And I already made in my mind. I'm, there's somebody that I love telling stuff to. But in this season, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying they're going to do anything wrong. But in this season, I'm not. You just see it. I'm going to show you better than I could tell you. 
You got to have that mindset. Let me show you better than I can tell you. I want y'all to keep that. I want y'all to keep that. Move like a stealth aircraft in this in this last um, in this ending of this year going into 2024. Going into 2020. Exactly. Move in silence. Move in silence. Sometimes you talk too much. You're giving the enemy too much intel. And he's working through some people connected to you. And he's working through some people connected to you. So just be mindful of that. Just be mindful of that. Betrayal also taught, teaches you another level of forgiveness. I told you my brother was murdered at the same time. He was stabbed by 21 times by somebody he called his best friend. And his best friend to this day, since the last I've heard, still says he didn't do it. <laughs> still says he doesn't do it, he didn't do it. But I even forgive him, you know? And it's funny because they grew up together. They were babies together. Our families were very, very close. So we don't know all that took place that night, but I know my brother is gone. So it teaches you a level of forgiveness. Te teaches you a level of forgiveness. Thank you, nurse. Second Samuel 17, y'all. Read that. And you got to kind of read it with some of the Psalms, some of David's Psalms, because he was talking about it there too. Yeah, Ahithophel. But in, a crazy thing about Ahithophel, if you do some deep diving, I believe that was Bathsheba's grandfather. And I believe that was Bathsheba's grandfather. So there probably was some bitterness and resentment of why he wanted to turn on David. Because in one se season, he was a wise counsel. So maybe some bitterness was harboring between, you know, the encounters David had with Bathsheba. Amen. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Y'all done got me on a on a, a journey. We talked about forgiveness. We talked about betrayal. You can make it through betrayal too. When you're going through it, it just seems like, oh my God, this is the end. It seems like I don't know how I'm going to make it. But it put me in my prayer closet. There were days I slept in my prayer closet. Literally slept in my prayer closet. I didn't want to talk to anybody. Um, I didn't want to deal with anybody. All I wanted was God, because he was the only person that could help me. He was the only person that could help me. My family never experienced this, uh, my murder. So I had to be the strong one, right? I had to leave, my brother at the time was living in Connecticut. So I had to leave my home in, in Atlanta to go back up there to make sure everything is everything for his arrangements and stuff. Wow, I haven't talked about my brother in a while. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't perfect. I'm sure he was doing things that he shouldn't have been doing, but I still don't believe that he should have been murdered the way he was murdered. Why not just disconnect those friends? Why the stabbing of 21 times, you know? But it's all good. It's all good. I don't think the guy got sentenced yet either, though, because it happened, like, right before the pandemic. So that was always the excuse of, like, when the pandemic come, um, so I don't think he's been sentenced. I, I do believe he's still in jail. I don't think he's been sentenced. I don't know why I'm telling that. I don't know. I kind of disconnected from the case a little bit. I mean, my family tells me different things they'll tell me, but I kind of disconnected from it. And then when when I, oh no, never mind. I'm gonna get into that. <sighs> oh, we thank God for His grace and His mercy, y'all. We thank God for His grace and mercy. If there's anybody too who's 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 battled with uh, losing family grief, um, uh, especially around the holiday times, um, just stay in prayer. And um, something Dr. Medina says she practices um, pre-planning. Pre she know she knows her triggers of what's going to make her emotional, and she knows that she doesn't want on Christmas Day she doesn't want to be in a place of sitting reminiscing about her mom not being here so she'll pre-plan her day so i'm gonna make sure i'm doing this i make sure i'm doing this and just so she doesn't dwell there any longer um because that's something sometimes with do with with grief we can stay there longer than we need to you have to be mindful of that too the scripture says um i think it was god saying to samuel how long will you mourn for saul and when God asks a question, he already knows the answer to it, but he's, he's asking you, do you know? How long you, how long you gonna mourn over this? How long you gonna stay in this place? 
And that's good too. If you're somebody that's been dwelling on a situation for a very long time and you're still stuck there. And you're still stuck there. And you're still stuck there. December 16th, it was a hard time they found. Oh my God. My condolences. My God. I miss them. They included when I pray. I cry and keep going. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's nothing wrong with missing them, you know? Um, but you just, you don't want to stay in a place of grief. I remember when my aunt, my aunt died and we were really, really close. She was like a second mother to me. She wanted me to Christ. I took it hard for a while. And I found myself going, like, joining, like, these grief groups. And that was just, it, it, it didn't work for me because every day somebody else was dying. So it kept me in a place of death. So I had to literally get out of those uh, those grief groups. I had to literally get out of that. It was just it was just too much death, and it's just like if you want to move forward, you can't stay in a place of death. You can't stay in a place of grief. And we know that grief has I think what five stages of grief. You go through I think anger, resentment, maybe some bitterness or something like that. But even give that. Give your grief to God. Give your grief to God. Give your grief to God. I've had two sons murdered. My condolences. So, Miss Karen, do you understand how I felt about my brother? My condolences to you. My condolences to you. Okay, y'all. Uh, I lost my sister at the beginning of the year and still can't grieve for my loss. Yeah, sometimes it comes in. I think I heard, um, I don't know if it was Tyler Perry a while ago, said grief comes in waves. And I noticed that with me too sometimes. Um, it would just be really random. I'd be good, and then something will trigger a memory or something, and it would just... But even those moments, I give it to God. Even to those, in those moments, at 13, at a party by a friend. You know, and that's why I'm a little skeptical on some of these friends, you know? Because not everybody brings up their children the same way as you would, you know? Um, I understand now why my mom didn't let me spend the night at people's house. Like, it didn't make sense back then. They wanted to spend the night, they would have to come to my house. <laughs> That's how my mom was growing up. She would never let me go to anybody else's house to spend the night. But now I get that, and I probably do that with my kids too. Like, uh-uh, uh-uh, it's too much of that. Even, even, even my kids in their grown age, traveling with friends, I want to make sure you know them. You know what I'm saying? You're traveling to Mexico, you see what happened to uh, the girl. We're traveling over there with them. We make sure we know them. Because people will get you out of your comfort zone, out of your element, to a place where you're vulnerable, to a place where you um, you just don't know, out of your element, and then try to do stuff. So I'm very mindful. Yeah, it seems, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's why I'll be trying to tell like my, my niece and stuff. I'm like, girl, everybody's not your friend. You know what I'm saying? They love to, you know what I mean? Kids are kids. They love to be like, oh, this person's my friend. And not everybody's your friend. And that's why you got to pray for God-led uh, friends in your kid's life. Covenant relationships in your kid's life. David and Jonathan relationships in your kid's life. Because kids don't know. You know what I'm saying? They're just like, oh, this person's cool. We do this and we do that. And the whole time they could be harboring hate. I was listening to some type of recording on here. It was a 911 call. And I think it was a 12-year-old boy. He killed a 9-year-old boy. And he was just like, I'm tired of life, so I did it. Or something like that, he said. And I was just like, this this uh, innocent boy, I don't even think they knew each other. He just stabbed him. And then he called the police and said, I did it because I'm tired of life. Or I'm fed up with life. And I'm like, you're 12, bro. You don't even know half of life. But yeah. But yeah, again, to pray for the kids in the school, to the school system. The enemy definitely wants our kids. Let's pray for the school system. Thank you guys for the um, roses. Let's pray for the school system. Let's pray that we get godly teachers. Let's pray for the strength of the teachers. Because they have to deal with some personalities, baby. I thought I was bad when I went to school. But these kids got me times 10. I just, was, I just had a slick mouth, you know. I was fresh in the mouth sometimes. But uh, these kids got me beat. These kids got me beat. I would never th threaten my teacher or anything like that. I would just do stuff to get kicked out just because I didn't want to be in class. And I never do nothing crazy. These kids would bring knives and guns and all of that to school. All of that to school. 
All right, y'all, I'm going to go. I love y'all with the love of the Lord. Keep going. I'll keep continuing to posting about the, um, about the fast. I mean, about the, you know, the kind of, today's the last day of the fast, but about the rest of the challenge. Prayer board party is January 6th. I'll send you a reminder. Um, I'll send you a reminder. And our workshop is January 20th. That one's uh, kind of closed. Um, so thank you to the people that signed up for that. Thank you for all the gifts, y'all. Thank you for all the gifts. Make sure you stay in prayer ending out this year. If you can, y'all, December 31st, be in, be in somebody's house, somebody, the house of the Lord, if you can. If you can. If not, tune in somewhere. Love you, too. If not, tune in somewhere. Tune in somewhere. Tune in somewhere. We want to start the year off in the presence of the Lord or even have a party at your house, a Holy Ghost party at your house. All right, I'm going to try to put this on YouTube. Just give me a couple hours because it's been taking a very long time to download. So we'll aim for by 3 o'clock, this will be on YouTube. Love y'all with the love of the Lord. You have an amazing day.